do have an automa automated maintenance system what brings messages on the main this ignites and then you get a message this and this unit has to be maintained and also I cannot demonstrate because there's no maintenance uh, needed now there is a little li uh, button at the end of the line and you press this and you get an instruction so this instructs like here you have the help system and in the help system you also find maintenance and repair electric diagram so in the maintenance you have let's say most important thing we may look at greasing points pressure beam clamp saw carriage but um, I'm looking for the greasing point um, maybe this is a little strange you have to close it completely and then reopen it to choose a different a different manual like this one over here here, ha here you have all the spare parts all the order numbers if you in drawings if you find some piece here it's broken you can click on this and you see the ordering number so most complicated thing that stays is to identify like here on the on the pressure B, uh, on the angular fence if down here such a little piece it's damaged you can order a new one just clicking on it and you have here the order number with this number you can order it directly from Holmec this also it's halfway like an electronic shop but um, yeah, you would need to be connected to the internet to work with this. Okay, I closed it. I just need to find the proper section for the greasing. Ah, electric drawings. Here we do have also the electric drawing in electronic form. And if you find anything, let's say a relay with a number on it, then you can look it up over here if you see something like g3600 k1 you have here a cross reference so this one goes is to find on those pages 46.1 page 46 column one so and it brings you straight over to the place um, let's say another example here you see this relay, the contact, is on page 46.2. So we could go 46.2 and find the contact over here. Okay, we're gonna go. Finally, we may make it to the greasing. This one looks very much like greasing. Ah overview lubrication points here's the whole instruction for the lubrication points and here you see this is the calendar and it's like once a year it needs to be lubricated I can point out some places you may lubricate twice so everywhere where we have those linear guides like this is the rail from the linear guide. If you see such a rail, there's somewhere the slider. The slider is here below. So you have a greasing point here on the slider. We do have those rails are, are also up here for the pressure beam. You may come up and uh, take a picture. Can you just point the video? Yeah. So it's here, you can put the cap off and, uh, and down here is the second greasing point. The same thing is on the other side. It's here and here. So the same way we have 
greasing points. Everywhere you see such a linear guide, it's on the clamps. Down here, it's a greasing point, and up here. Then we have here a linear guide from the label printer. And same way we can find here a greasing point. And there's the second greasing point from the label printer. So how many pumps are required for, for greasing? Uh, each greasing, I would say, is um, usually is two strokes. But um, if it runs very easy in, maybe you make a third one. And if you have some pressure against, then it's one and a half. But something, something has to go in. Yeah. And uh, it's not helpful to over grease because you have on the end of the linear guide, uh, on the linear roller bearing, there are seals and they may, with the pressure, you pop them out and then sealing is bad. That's the worst case. Okay, let's go to the door. To open the door, that's the request of an opening. So everything moving, gonna stop, and then turn the key. Turn the handle, go in key with you that nobody locks you in and restarts the machine. Here we have a very important greasing point, and that's the point we may should grease twice a year. So here is one, and here in the back is the other one. Because they do much movement, and there's a lot of time in the cutting area. And in the cutting area, it's very dusty, and so they're gonna dry out the grease compartment. So back here. There's a point, same thing. This here is in the dust area and that dries it out. Uh, this is another one. I may go and get the pusher back. Here's another point, because there are three, one from the front, one from the back, and one from here. This one is blue, so it's three linear bearing blocks. Closing the door, just in reverse order. Key back. Make sure it's, and then just reset the safety. Okay, other greasing points are here at the saw carriage. Um, we have to open this to the control. And what is the uh, set point of the uh, pressure? Air pressure? Uh, pressure is six to eight bars. So at the moment it is here. Okay, there it is. Six bar, maximum eight. So six seven is fine. Six seven is fine. So six to seven psi. I mean bar is fine. Okay. Okay, here are the blades inside. 
Let's uh, just let the operator get take the blade out. It's maybe better if the operator does that because uh, they are trained for it and they do it regularly. So there's one grease point here, just in this hole. Yeah. Then the operator, the operators are trained to to dismantle the housing a bit that they for cleaning. So if you have to grease that, you need the assistance of the operator. So this panel can be easily removed, this one can be removed. We have, that is, they are just bolted down each with two screws. We have those snap-in table uh, panels. So this allows access for cleaning mainly, but if you move the saw carriage, the whole saw carriage over, it gives you also access for inspection. Um, same thing on the other side. So first to for first access. This can be taken off. This two screws. No. Only this screw, and then the panel can lip can be lifted off. These two screws, the front panel can be taken off. Same on the other side. And this is where you mainly gain access to the saw carriage. So then we can look at the greasing point document. That's the greasing point document. And here we got pictures. Here, general description, how to grease those uh, linear blocks. And here, uh, this is the saw carriage. This carriage with the saw blades travels here inside what I just showed. And you see here, there's in front a, a, a nipple. On the saw carriage are various points, like six points maybe, to grease. So you see here each one indicating a point. And so you actually have to crawl in the machine or on, on, onto. Some of them can be done over here. And then if you close the machine, the operator can have them travel to the other end. Maybe not fully, but you can pull them back, grease the other side. But if you have manually pulled them back, you just push them 20 centimeters off the end stopper. Otherwise, it will report an error and not, it's like over traveling. So just push them a little bit back and then put the, put the covers on and switch on the machine and, and it returns to the, to, the, to the basic position. Yeah, make sure before you read the document. This is on the pressure beam, um, and you go through the through the document, and you will see everything. Uh, it's it's not an endless list. This was the printer. We already looked at it. That's a little program fence. What I said, you can you can easily grease twice a year. That's the lock-in unit. We look from the back.
We don't have a drilling unit. Don't let, uh, let you confused by that. Drilling unit we don't have. It's a very, very seldom thing that that almost not that, that's almost not existent. Existing, it's maybe you only build two or three times. Don't let you confused by by those pictures here at the end. Okay. Router unit, same thing. We don't have a router unit. So after saw carriage, it's only machine body, saw carriage, label printer, and the clamp of the program fence. Not more. Yeah. Then for the air condition up there, regular service. Yeah. And what is the set point of the... Uh, the set point, it's, uh, I think it's shown over there at 34, 35. So it will hardly use, I mean, hardly uh, start because our AC is 20, 26. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's actually, as you have an AC over here, we wouldn't need uh, air conditioning. But um, it has some advantages on the, if you don't have an air condition, you have the, this, uh, the fans blowing in, you have to filter to clean, and the air condition just circulates the, the air inside. And if the if it's not activated, so there's not not much to do. It's actually cleaning of filters. Yeah, maybe once a year cleaning uh, clear the, the filters. Maybe sometimes it it, it, hit, it starts. But it's only the filters from the exterior air. What about the drain of the AC? Yeah, the drain. I just modified it on the other machine. It is fine. You have to be. You have to make sure that the drain stays stays free. So on the other machine was bent like this. So drain is very important. But the drain goes in the extraction system. So even every drop of water gets gets uh, sucked up by its extraction. I also use the under pressure to to make sure that this is not blocked and suck suck out the water. That works very well. Anything else to know about uh, um, maintenance? No, uh, this is the maintenance side. The rest is cleaning. Um, yeah, the air. Yeah, the, the air has an automatic draining system. So the, the, the water separator over there each time the air comes, it just blows off a little bit. Um, yeah, real maintenance is years away. There are belts, belts on the saw carriage. That's not easy to change. So the scoring saw bed is easy, but the main saw bed is a bit complicated. So if you have an issue with that, you consult to the maintenance manual anyhow to explain that now what things gonna gonna happen in years it's may you just consult the omex service maybe you get a local technician maybe you have somebody here anyway or you just get talk through it or read the manual i think first step read the manual there are instructions how to change the belt okay so that if it is done properly, a belt is good on a one shift operation for years. So a belt could hold as long as five years, eight years. It depends very much on the usage and also if you have very hard melamine coverage of uh, two millimeter or one and a half millimeter melamine, those pieces are really nasty. If they fall down and get get run through the belt system, then that then we have to build a lot. Yeah, that's all special. That's that. That's all what's special on the machine. The rest is standard. Okay, so that's all for the maintenance to review yep. and uh, guidance to follow. So let's say half a year, check the greasing points for the first time. Okay, so after six months, greasing points, and then what else? Yeah, but after so I I would recommend you go through it every every six months. 
okay so that's all no further information uh, required for this uh, maintenance work yes only if there are any complaint if there are no complaints from the operators this this preventive maintenance things you do even if, if, if it works fine okay so i'll if cut the video broken, you just uh, investigate yeah i got the video from here okay